Hello, everybody. I have another story. This is very funny. Um, and we have a clever frog in here and some very hungry chefs and makes for quite a tale. Gilbert de la Frog Pond. This is a swamp story. It is by Jennifer Ray. Gilbert was a hopper with an appetite for bugs, for caterpillars and dragonflies and juicy little slugs. He ate so many winged things for oh so many moons that he blew up when he grew up to the size of a balloon. He was not a tiny little frog. Since Gilbert was enormous, but because his feet were small, the hefty little hopper couldn't swim a stroke at all. So while his friends went swimming in their frankly frog-like ways, he flopped upon deserted docks and slept away the days. He's a big fat frog. One day, the calm was broken when a pair of gourmet cooks came hunting round the frog pond for some frogs to bait their hooks and they heaped a pile of slugs and flies up high upon a dish to tempt the little hoppers who would surely tempt the fish. Hmm, they need some frogs for bait. The hoppers, they heard the ruckus and they scurried out of sight. They hid beneath the water where they shook with frog-like fright. And all across the frog pond from the rowboat to the shore not a sound or a splash was heard, except a single soggy snore. The cooks looked round in wonder. They rubbed their eyes in shock, and the one said to the other, Do you see what's on the dock? A frog so slow and sleepy and so big and meaty too. Why bother catching small frogs? We can cut this one in two. That got the cooks to thinking, and the first one scratched his head. What need have we for fish at all? Let's eat this frog instead. We'll have his arms for supper and his chubby legs for lunch. The rest of him will squeeze into a sausage for our brunch. Looks like he's listening to this. Did you know that some people eat frog legs? That it's a very fancy food in some places. And I hear it tastes like chicken. Poor Gilbert heard them scheming. Poor Gilbert saw his fate. He closed his eyes and visualized his legs upon a plate. And so to save his slimy skin, he cleared his croaky throat and spinning on his frog's legs. Gilbert faced the leaky boat. My friends, you must be gourmet chefs, and so am I, you see. I'm Gilbert de la Frog Pond. That's a frog pond with an E. And I'll share with you a secret, as I see you've got some slugs. Frogs are très passé these days. The latest thing is bugs. Oh, yes. There's Hornet jalapeno, there's caterpillar stew, and horsefly primavera, though the wings are hard to chew. Centipede salads divine for something fresh and light, but watch out for mosquito quiche. I itched and scratched all night. You think he has eaten those, or he's got a great, quick imagination to think. I'm sure you've heard of chocolate ants and firefly fondue and earthworm enchiladas and bedbug barbecue. So why would you eat frog's legs or tough and tasteless toad when all of haute cuisine's a buzz with insects a la mode? Yeah, why eat 
frog when you could eat bugs. The chefs looked at the frog and asked, what is this new cuisine? The flavors sound exotic, though the portions seem quite lean. But if eating bugs is all the rage, I guess we probably should. And they gobbled up some slugs and cried, they're really rather good. The chefs threw down their fish poles and scrambled to the shore. We need those recipes, they cried. We, you've got to tell us more. <laughs> so they talked and ate for hours. Look at all these bugs. Ugh. Till they'd finished all the slugs. And then they all fell fast asleep and dreamt delicious dreams of bugs. So you know that Gilbert the frog was a very fast thinker to turn their appetites from eating fish and using frogs for bait. Then they thought, let's eat some frogs. And he said, oh, no, 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 you must not eat frogs. And so he convinced them that bugs were all the rage and juicy slugs. And he convinced them. And that's